time. What year was it? 2100. The year 2100, so then. 20 years ago. 2008. I would have paid money to see the artists like that play. Dubai used to be an entertainment hub. People came from everywhere. You could see anybody, anyone. Rounding the planes and the rationing and electricity doesn't lend to the maintenance of leisurely arts and culture. Hello everyone, my name is Booty, I am the venue manager. Is there anyone that did not receive the credential? You're going to need these going forward. Country of origin, destination, and the year 2100. <laughs> I still can't believe that it's 2100. Yeah. Passport portraits are up. So they gave us this. There's a chick somewhere inside. You must have questions. Don't worry. I promise to pass on any information as soon as I hear. Oh, don't move. Oh, where was I? What was that? What was what? You said you'd pass on information. No, it's nothing new. Forget what's new, we were not supposed to stop here. The next stop was going to be the ship, so then why are we here waiting? I'm sorry, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Is, is that the link? Yeah, we're friends. <laughs> Hello? They block the road from here to your ship. Why? Raiders. Huh? Is there raiders? When are the raiders in Dubai? They surprised the group ahead of you. They took hostages, looted. We were told the road was safe. It was safe. But welcome to the year 2100. Things change quickly here. So I have family. They're in a group ahead. I don't know where they are, just that they're ahead. Do you want to sit down? I need to stand. Excuse me, the people here in this group have been waiting for this voyage for years. Most likely, they're one of the final groups. They're not fools. They've heard about the raiders in California, Tunisia, Spain. What made you think that they couldn't have handled this news? They said you can't. Oh, really? Well, then mission accomplished. I would prefer if you stop filming. No, I'm pressed. That's why I'm here to make sure that we have a record of this, exactly this. Who are these raiders? Let me tell us that. Dubai has been a hub, a jumping off point for both. New Mars in Russia and New Saturn in Norway. For this reason, because of this, there's been an expectation among essential workers that, of course, they have to stay and keep working to the end to keep things running. That when the final ship departed, they have a place. What do you mean there's been the expectation? They were told they have a place. And now they don't. Some don't. They've turned to abducting those who they feel have jumped the line. So us. No, there's no service. They knocked it out. All we have is this. Yeah, all we have is this. If you have a press pass, you're exactly who they're taking. What? So they could be anywhere. They could be at that door. Yes, the door. What? Sorry. I, I could have explained.
I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to sing out loud. Sorry. It's so beautiful. Turn what? Nakakabangan mo Ikargaan na kontra ko Kay bugat ng simpuntos ko Tabangan mo ko ano I used to sing that to my daughter. She's there now in New Mars, I think. I hope. I sent her ahead. There were so few ships remaining. It was the hardest thing I have to do. I can't sing to her now, so I sing this to myself. I sing as if to her. It's the best thing that I can do. Sometimes, you know, I need to know that this is what I do. It's the best thing that I can do. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Maybe there's somebody else with a song or a poem? Prayer? I have a poem. A poem? No, 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 no. 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 Wait a second. Should we be focused on the Raiders? What about the Raiders? Is there something we can do? Something that we haven't thought of yet? The Raiders. I'll sit. The floor's yours. Hi everyone. I've met most of you, but my name is Rumana. I'm from Indonesia. So, in Indonesia, we've been waiting for the world to get this migration started since decades before I was born. I feel like I've been here, right here my entire life, or s somehow longer than my entire life. Waiting is in my DNA, a birthright. Growing up, everyone around me seemed in a constant state of mourning for a place, a safe place, somehow bright but never boiling, where rain doesn't mean a flood, and land was a thing that nurtured, where there were animals, so many animals, they were everywhere, apparently. But what is this place? Because people clearly loved it enough to move through the world, somehow heavy from its loss, depleted. So all, everyone around me, parents, grandparents, elders, they were mourning always, but also waiting to mourn by the planet's bedside, but also by its grave. They need to weep, but what kind of tears? So they don't weep, and they tell us not to cry. They say, don't worry, our leaders are working, building cities in the north and Russia, Norway, New Mercury, Pluto, soon we'll all go there. We kept hearing, have new homes, better homes. But Indonesians, we're skeptical. Our capital was sinking 80 years ago, so we moved it. And we did this when our ancestors, some of them, were still eating beef or driving, what do they, what do they call it, Toyota Alphard or Cadillac Escalade, all those. It was a different time, but even then, we moved it to a new city, better city, they said. But this new city still had rain and more rain and heat, rain and heat, heat and rain until here we are. Should we mourn for this new city we've only had for 50 years? If so, how do we mourn? What kind of tears? For the only home some of us have ever known. 
Before I left, I transferred all my favorite poems into this. There's one I always read when there are raiders on the road, metaphorically most time, but literally too, I guess, when I'm waiting to move, to weep, to mourn. It was written by my grandmother in 2045 when she left her home, Jakarta, for IKN Nusantara. She wrote in Indonesian, so I'll translate. It might not be. I'll try. Or no, I'm sorry. Something's missing. This isn't the right. Are you okay? It's fine. It's just. A poem sometimes doesn't work in just a vacuum. It needs a place, like a soil. Do you need some water? Work. No. Close your eyes. Everyone, yes, close your eyes, everyone. Me? Yes. Everyone, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Are they closed? <coughs> Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, take a deep breath from deep down in your belly. Now remember a time and place where, where you felt completely and truly at home. You may have been a child. Perhaps it was more recent. I don't know. It's yours. And remember, who else was there? Were you alone? How did that feel? What sounds were there with you in this place, in this memory of yours? Can you hear nature? Rain or wind or voices or traffic? Whatever it was, listen and remember. Now, what did you feel? Were you sitting on a chair or on the floor? Were you in bed? Were you holding something? Was someone holding you? Whatever it was, feel it. Now, wherever you've gone to, whatever you hear there, see there, feel, let it wash through you. Float in the memory. Feel it surround you like water. Now, while you float, hear these words from my grandmother. When the world grows beyond what the mind can see or imagine, when loss scrapes out our hearts, or grief binds us to our beds, when one life leaves us to make room for what comes next, be kind to yourself, to your family, to other human beings, to each living being, and to the whole world. Or, in Japanese, Mama yu hayu ning pribadi. Mama yu hayu ning keluarga. Mama yu hayu ning sesama. Mama yu hayu ning bawah. Okay, open your eyes. So you're back here now in Dubai, it's 2100, but wherever you just went, bring that place here, bring it into this room, hold it with you, and let it give you what you need. Sorry, I guess I really took things over. <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. Is it something that everyone in the room needs to hear? Yes, so don't worry. My head's on my shoulder. I just wanted to say I'm sorry, everyone. It was not my goal to freak everyone out. It's just that I have family there in another group. They're ahead. I don't know where they are, just that they're ahead. Odds are that they're safe, but the radar, it's, it's all very frightening. But I'll take deep breaths, thank you. If there's a room that understands you, it's this one. 
Also then since we're sharing things. An another poem? <laughs> uh, <coughs> I'm a playwright. Well, um, there haven't been plays in Mumbai since before me. At least not one that my family could afford. But I've been writing to my friend and my siblings my whole life. And then I want to go to your song India. I started thinking that maybe, maybe on you Mars there will be a theater and I'll start writing a new script. <laughs> Are you asking us to read it? Would you? My schedule is open. Oh, please. Um, I made a copy for each character on that time. <laughs> uh, Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Uh, did you want to? Yeah, I'd love to. Here? Okay. And um, there you go. Why don't you come up here on this? We can use this as a stage. Yep. Who else? I used to act in school. Oh, okay. Great. And um, did you want to? Uh, uh, no, I don't perform. Are you sure? I think you'll be great. Well. Come on, you're hired. Chalo, chalo, chalo. I'll do my best. Okay. Um, I'll do the stage direction. Okay? <coughs> Time. Near future. Place. New Mars. A. Stands on stage holding a flashlight. B. Enters, pulling a sled piled high with scrap metal. Enter C and D, wearing police uniforms. Action! Stop! Oh God, no! Be cool! Good evening, officer. You pulling a sled piled comically high with scrap metal clearly stolen from construction site. Oh no, please! You don't understand. Take this sled, we'll go. That isn't how this works. I I have a daughter. I, I'm only here for her. When we arrived, we were supposed to have a home. It took us months to get here, but at least we have a place to lay our heads. When they took us to the unit, it was destroyed, stripped for parts. So now you steal from other buildings? They have us sleeping in a tent. There were holes at the bottom. When it rains, it soaks her blanket. Her teeth chatter even when she's sleeping. All night, I worry if it stops, it would mean she isn't breathing. She, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do this. What do you mean you can't? I, I can't do this right now. What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't want to do it right now. You know, the whole play is not like that, I promise. This explain it's not for us right now. What's that supposed to mean? It means that perhaps your audience isn't ready to hear these things this moment. You know, actually they are. These are the very things they need to hear. If we are preparing ourselves for the inevitable violent oppression waiting for us up there in our new city. Do you have something else? Something else? Yeah, yeah, another story. It doesn't have to be a play. I'll be back. Where are you going? The Raiders in the next room. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't, I didn't mean to cause a scene. I'm sorry, we understand. There's still nothing. Does anybody have something else they want to share? Anybody? Christina? Maybe? Yes? From my grandfather, something he used to tell us when we visit him as children. God, I can't believe I'm going to tell this. I mean, you're going to think that I'm... I'm sure it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my grandfather, he would tell us a story about a very old lady Witch adjacent or perhaps a real life witch who lived alone in the woods and who was said to eat children but didn't really eat children. But maybe she did. No one knew, so no children ever went into the woods. And of course, we'd always say, almost immediately as he started talking, but Grandpa, this is just Baba Yaga. <laughs> Yeah.
this is why I'm completely insane. Why am I going to tell the story? Russian lady, Russian fable, it's on the nose. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, I'll keep going. My grandfather told us it wasn't Baba Yaga, that it was a real life witch type woman who may or may not have eaten children, but whose reputation, besides her reputation and presence in the woods, did a good job at keeping children at all times really far away. And when he grew older, my grandfather, he became a scientist. And as a man of science, of course, he knew that there was no child eating reach roaming the woods searching for boys and girls. But then one day, he found himself in need of a permit to produce a newly designed next generation solar panel. <laughs> and much to his confusion and dismay and surprise when he presented, when he requested actually the permit, a stuffy government official told him, okay, this is what he told us. Okay. He told him to go into the woods and uh, uh, find Baba Yaga and ask her to sign off on his design. Um, so he went into the woods, just in case, without uh, expecting, not expecting to find anything but um, you know, trees and sticks and birds. But then he did. He found uh, Baba Yaga. Except remember, not Baba Yaga, and uh, that not Baba Yaga was annoying. She wouldn't sign uh, the papers. She kept saying that she would if he did this and that and then all sort of things. Uh, first, she asked him to clean her house, uh, do her laundry, cook her meals. Before he knew it, it was like food rub. And then she threw 100,000 poppy seeds all throughout the forest and said she couldn't you know, sign the papers until he gathered and gave her back each and every one. Once he did that, even then, the paperwork was endless. And all the while, he knew that they were, they were wasting so much time. That he began to wonder that perhaps that was the point. But he could hear the forest crying. No. Creaking all around. And then, all at once, the whole forest was on fire. And then, vroom, rushing past him on her gnarly, bony chicken legs, not Baba Yaga's legs, faster than human flame, a monster. Wait, he shouted, fearing that all his work had been for nothing, that she'd left the permitless, empty-handed. But then, he saw it floating in her way, dodging embers, swirling. He saw the permit, signed and stamped, project approved. He looked out across the ashes of what once had been a forest. And he said, here, it's too late for the forest, but here is where I'll build. And those solar panels built over 60 years ago is what now supplies power to new marks. That's it. Thank you, Grandpa. Is it true about the solar panels? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, but still, I am back. Hi, Rakasha. I know you hate me. Uh, we don't hate you. I don't understand why we should praise these privileged ancestors. I mean, yeah, sure, it sounds like your grandfather worked his way through a lot of red tape, but still, he gained access to a lot of land. And surely he made profits, right? It doesn't sound like such a struggle to me. Does everything have to be? That's easy for you to say. Sorry, what was that? 
I know we're quite literally on the same boat, but a journalist on corporate funding, not migrating, but returning to her own home country. <laughs> it's not a struggle for everyone. We've been traveling on the same road, quite literally. You cannot see that. No, I cannot. I, I like your story. Thank you. It had hope. <clears throat> uh, a little bit of cannibalism. Uh -huh. Maybe cannibalism, but but hope too. And what good? What good does hope do? So her grandfather built a solar farm. Wow, it's too late. Five billion people are migrating from the equator to the poles. That's happening. What is the point of reflecting on small victories of the past when we've lost our homes? There are raiders on the road and our new city of 100 million will have problems. I guess the question is, what is the purpose of art? Is it pointless? change the world in one fell swoop? Is art something that can change the world at all? I have been weighing this often. Every time I leave that point where we'll pass a statue, see the beauty. Because somehow, still, it's true, we still have so much left to lose. Our problems are devastating, tragic, and abundant. And yes, art is a tool. Hamlet said a mirror of nature, so there's that. Art can show us who we are. Wars, generation spending, systemic corruption and all. Art can also be a light. Stick with a mirror. Art can point that mirror at just an angle to reflect the sun onto its subject, make the winds shield their eyes, that same light could even set a field on fire and blow people around it in its place. But is the mirror just a weapon? Why not looking at ourselves in the mirror? <coughs> Exploring, confronting who we are. What about looking past the mirror beyond the thing? What about art beyond that? What about ritual? Here we are picking up cultures by the root. Planting them in cities in the snow. Will we frown on dances, poems, carving if they worship the earth and fail to save it? Don't get me wrong, I write for you, and I intend they were so brightly like all those who have failed us, leave them begging on the road tonight for the same scraps they've always told us were enough. But for that art to have a meaning for more than you and me, perhaps a friend or two, we need a world filled with artists. That doesn't mean they're professional, sold, or published. It does mean that they're <coughs> open, inquisitive, and patient. Only artists read a poem and find themselves profoundly moved. Hear a song that art has for it. Watch a play. To be provoked. These artists, most artists, will never write or sing or dance. They'll just simply live and breathe and tell themselves a story from who knows where, a deck of phrase, embrace an image, and use that story and change something for the better. Not the world, not the world, but something. Does a mother story to her child solve the world hunger? No. But her story one day will make your story better. Because now the child's mind being taught to see the world beyond the grit and grinds of day to day. The world's not finished, it's still forming. An artist, one artist, cannot change the world. In this world, I kept thinking she can't change very much at all, but, but art, Art itself, used by a world of people to know themselves more deeply, to sense who they are, where they are, and what the world could be. I guess that's the hope for change. And for me, I say, 
all art is welcome. If it's honest, it's welcome. If it isn't, it should be. Friend, I know I'm the one who stopped it, but I feel real bad that you didn't finish your play. I understand. The point wasn't to re-traumatize. So what's your point? What do you mean? Sorry, that came out wrong. What I mean to say is, I would like to understand what you're trying to tell, and if you'd like to tell me, I'd listen. Well, I guess this is my shot then. What was my point? In a way, I think that is the point. What's the point is the point. I mean, that's what we're all left asking, is it not? We've known, not since last century, but since the century before that this. Well, not this exactly, but something like this. Since before we were even thought of, our ancestors knew that this would be the world they'd leave us if they did nothing. And they did nothing. How is that supposed to make us feel? I hear stories of millions of species, animals that sound like they belong to another planet, coral reefs bursting with vivid, dazzling light, air that was crisp, harmless, even pleasant to breathe. They took all of that with them down to their graves. And we're not blameless, are we? We're ancestors too. What are we doing? I remember reading about the capitalists in the Second Gilded Age. Their plans to terraform Mars. Just give up, pick up, leave it all behind. I remember thinking, how did people so stupid end up with so much money? Ruin a paradise. Flee to a rock in space, so selfish. And yet, what are we doing? Siberia is not Mars, Scandinavia is not Saturn, but really it's not all that different, is it? It's in the names that we've chosen. And I read the news, not just from New Mars, but all of them, all these new cities, new Mercury. And I can't help but feel that most of what we're bringing with us are all the things that destroyed all that we've left behind. And let's not forget, we're leaving things behind. We're leaving people behind. And for what? What are we creating? More cities? Higher north? Sure, better equipped? Maybe. But how long will they last? How long will they last if we don't look at what we're doing? Rub our noses in it, digest what we've excreted, consume it, expel it and suffer. Yes, I want art to make us suffer. So that maybe, just maybe, one day we will decide not to suffer again. Yeah, you asked. It's funny, I never thought of myself as last half world, maybe a third world or a quarter, but they didn't do nothing. Who? Our ancestors. They made mistakes, sure. Sometimes progress was uneven. It took us far too long, but we're not burning oil moving from place to place. Did I resent how long it took? Yes. To those who live their lives enriching themselves off of the destruction of the planet that is ours as much as theirs, deserve to be despised by the descendants they ignored, of course they do. But there were others. I know it's cold comfort to say that it could be worse, but it could be worse. And what are we doing? We came together. 200 plus countries and we pulled off this. The organized migration of half the Earth's people, too late for many, but just in time for us. So is it perfect? Of course it's not perfect, it's a mess. 
what I'm trying to say is that I may be less than impressed with what we will find there, but when I told my daughter about New Mars, that they made a new city far away and that soon we'd get to live there, the first thing she asked me was, who made it? Who made the new city, mommy, followed swiftly by, how can we thank them? So she may be the reason that now I'm glass half full. But they made a city for 100 million people. How amazing is that? How glass half full is that? I'm sorry. I just can't see it that way. All I see is 100 million people who should be someplace else. And you're right. We should be. And yet here we are. The road is clear. <laughs> <laughs> Can we leave now? Can we go? Uh, soon. They're going to send us. Can we leave next? I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Oh. But still, we're going to have a mic. What? What? Oh, I can't believe it. This is it. I was expecting the worst, and, and now. Now it feels like we're missing something or skipping something. I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring the mood down. I guess I'm just really good at that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. What are we missing? I, I also don't know. I know, I know. I don't know. You wish we could all shout at each other for another 30 minutes because I can do that! <laughs> <laughs> Are they close? Yes. yes. We are with you. We are with you. <coughs> okay, this time, take a deep breath in your belly. This time, remember the last place you were before you came into this space. You may have been busy, trapped in your own head. It was busy time. A lot of things happening. But what else is there? What people, sounds, sensations, let them wash over you like a distant memory returning. What were you feeling then? Feel that again. Whatever it was, it's not right or wrong. It's just is. It is a valid thing to feel. Now let that feeling, that moment, that piece of you run through you like a blade so fine it cuts and you don't bleed. Now holding these things, hear these words, another, another one of my favorites. Like starlight mid-journey, dark cloak of heaven trailing. Like tides turn back, by a force they cannot fathom as moonlight dances and waves tumble into sand. Like geese alert, feathers standing in the cooling autumn air, web toes dancing, minds already taking flight. Like a generation of leaves, red-faced, militant, standing at attention, waiting only for the wind to signal their release to send them home from active service back to earth. Like the dog who smells his master but does not yet see or hear him. The sun behind a drifting cloud, 
the Earth's core churning. Moments between a lightning bolt and thunder when heads turn and lips part, counting. Like counting. Like one, two. And if you listen, here we are, a world already waiting, people already living after you. Open your eyes. Welcome back, everyone. Today is the 10th of December. And you are at COP28. 2023. <laughs> we encourage you now to keep your eyes open to who you are and who you want to be. To those who are still to come and the world we'd like to leave them. To what's been lost, yes, but also what you still have. To that within you. And to those around you. To the possible. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adam Marvel. I'm the co-artistic director of the Theater of Others and the director of this performance called Bright Light Burning. Uh, if you want to find out some more information about the show, we encourage you to go to the QR code on your little tags here, which are yours to keep, uh, to find out more about the company and also the project that this comes from, We Are the Possible. Uh, I would, I'd like to just kind of go down the list and uh, introduce the company to you. We're from uh, nine different countries all over the world. Uh, we are an international theater company. And... Uh, we started this project over the summer in July. We met up in Singapore to rehearse for two weeks. We've been on Zoom ever since. And we performed all week long in the Green Zone, Extreme Hangouts, the Hubble University Library, um, Blue Zone at the UK Pavilion, and tonight for you. And we really appreciate your presence and your patience uh, with something very new, I'm sure, for a lot of you in this beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, I'd like to introduce Arwa Heza from Cairo. from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Christina Bakalova from Russia, Singapore. <laughs> the other co artistic director of the Theatre of Others, Booty Mill from Australia and America. <laughs> Romana Yamani from Jakarta, Indonesia. <laughs> Judy Delacruz from Quezon City, Philippines. And the question of all from Mumbai, India. Uh, we really appreciate it. Like I said, we encourage you to keep your eyes open and to think about what it would mean 77 years from now, 2100. What will your grandchildren, what's the world that they're going to be inheriting? We'd love to talk with you after this event. We have lots more to do tonight, of course. We want to go outside and enjoy the poetry. But please, don't be a stranger. Come and talk to any one of us. We love talking about our art. So thank you all very much. Thank you.